G'day, g'day. <laughs> Let's play a game. <laughs> the Roadcaster Pro 2. If you're a creator, or a live streamer, or a YouTube dreamer, or podcaster, then this is the mixer for you. It's the Road Roadcaster Pro 2. An amazing piece of equipment that you never know existed until now. So here's what you gotta do is get yourself the road caster pro two. G'day, g'day. It's Coach Craig Rowe here from Australia coming to you live beaming into your Amazon app. So I want to say thank you for joining me today for a live stream on content creation. So a little bit about me is I have a background in media. So I was a local radio announcer here in Australia, and I've since pivoted into podcasting and things of that nature. So if you're here and you're wanting to check out this piece of equipment, then I'm happy that you've joined me. I've got a few items here that I want to go through today on the Roadcaster Pro 2, as well as some other equipment as well. What I'm going to be doing is switching between microphones because I've set up this unit, but I'm not sure if there's a voice delay. So I'm going to go to my USB microphone, which is good because it's going to give you a comparison of the audio from the Roadcaster Pro 2 nonetheless. You should be able to hear me now. This is my normal, I'll just take these off. This is my normal microphone that I would, you know, do my live streams on. This is a USB microphone. Today, I'm going to be talking about some content uh, equipment. So if you're a content creator or someone who's considering, you know, podcasting and that, there's a lot of products on the market that can help you achieve that result. The one that I settled on as a podcaster and a YouTuber and content creator for that matter is the Roadcaster Pro 2 and Roadcaster and their products. So I'm going to show you a couple of those products today. If you are joining me uh, and you're watching, then feel free to ask any questions. If I can answer them, I will. But I wanted to talk about the microphone that I'm going to be using today, which is another Rode product. It's the Pod Mic from Rode, and you can see it there in the carousel. And it's about a kilo. It's a heavy microphone. and I use this for podcasting, and I tried a number of different mics and over the, over the years, and uh, settled on this particular microphone because it matches the equipment that I'm demonstrating for you today. And what makes it special is it has a number of features that are built into it that a lot of people wouldn't realize. Now, it is a dynamic microphone, so what that means is it doesn't need what we say is phantom power to operate. Now. The Rodecaster Pro Mixer allows you to have both phantom power for what we call condenser mics, which I'll show you one of those later. And it also doesn't require phantom power for dynamic microphones. So this microphone that I'll be demonstrating with today is the pod mic from Rode. And it has a full metal construction. That's why it weighs around a kilo. I think it's about 750, 800 grams uh, in the metric system. And you also have some features built into this microphone that include uh, a windshield. So often you buy equipment, you get like a a pop filter. It has that. It has the windshield, which is similar to what a windsock would be used for. And then it also has a shock mount built in around the diaphragm. So the diaphragm of the microphone is the component that picks up your voice and your vocals. So all those features are important to pre-production. That's what makes Rhodes mic quite a good piece of engineering and build is that it incorporates so many things that other microphones don't that you'd have to buy attachments for. So this particular microphone offers these built into its construction and it is well made. As I said, it's a full metallic build. It's one of those, I would say in the Goldilocks zone that it's not too cheap and it's not too expensive, which makes it just right and it's a broadcast quality microphone so if you're someone who broadcasts regularly or wants to create audio content or narrate then the pod mic is certainly 
a good product to do that. But we'll come back to the main feature of today's episode of my live. So I've done did one the other day. Today I'm focusing on the content creation stuff that I use myself for my YouTube channel in my podcasting. And this is the Rodecaster Pro 2. One of the things with mixers is a lot of people get a little bit bamboozled by all the dials and knobs. In fact, this one sort of lights up like a Christmas tree, but there's reasons for that. And something a lot of people don't often realize is that a lot of electronic equipment is uh, actually color coded. And the reason these light up like Christmas tree is because they actually are corresponding to each other. So that's the idea of, uh, you know, most electronic equipment is going to be color coded in some way. So while it does look like it's all nice and shiny like a Christmas tree, it is intentional. They do put these colors and these lights on it. Same with computers. If you ever looked at the back of, say, a desktop computer, you may have noticed that all the plugs are color coded. That's to make it more or less foolproof so people like me don't make mistakes. So we'll come back to it and have a little bit more of a conversation around it. I might start with the back of the unit itself. So you have your power switch here. It does use USB-C power. It has a power adapter, which is on the floor. I won't show you that, but it comes with the adapter that you would need. Then it has two USB-C outs. So right now I'm connected to the computer with a USB-C cable. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change back to the Rodecaster Pro 2 so that I can go through some of these features. So I'm back on the unit of the Rodecaster Pro 2. So hopefully you are hearing me. But uh, yeah, so this is the unit. This is, uh, as I say, the USB-C jacks as well. So what you'll see is uh, that it has two of those. So what that allows you to do is it allows you to connect to either a computer or two computers or say a, a hard drive. So you can actually record direct to a hard drive. You can also, I'll just move this a little bit so you can see, it also has an SD card slot so you can record direct to SD card. And it has this ethernet connection. Now, this is a piece of equipment that has both Ethernet and Wi-Fi. And you may say, well, why would a mixer have Ethernet and or Wi-Fi? Well, the reason being is because this has its own operating system. So unlike the Rodecaster Pro, the first version, this one has its own software that they've built specifically to add extra features as content creators need more. So the more features that we asked for, the more Rode is able to customize its mixer, which makes it a game changer against many of the other mixers that are currently on the market. So that's one of the nice things about it, the fact that it has the two USB-C connections. Now here, I'll talk about this a little bit later, but what you see here is a USB uh, C2 lightning connector, which is a road cable. If uh, you want to connect, say, a iPad or some sort of phone device for what we call mix minus, so taking in calls. So if, say you've got a podcast where it's a chat show, then that cable would be needed. So you can connect it to, say, a you know, app or, say, Clubhouse or one of the social audio platforms. You can do mix minus with this particular mixer, which is also a really nice feature. It does also come with Bluetooth as well. So while it can connect in these ways, you can also connect it with a phone or device via Bluetooth. However, the encoding there isn't as good quality as using the cables. So therefore, uh, I'd suggest buying the cables if you are looking to buy it. So as I said before, these are the headphone jacks where you enter he place headphones. Then you have some TRS and XLR inputs. Now, depending on what you're using on those particular ports would determine you know, what you're going to use at the main part of the mixer as far as the channels go. So those mixers or those little inputs at the back correspond to the channels uh, that you have here on the main panel of the mixer. Let's talk about the panel of the mixer while we've got it here. So as I said at the start of the live, these are the volume adjustments for the headphones. And then you also have this encoding uh, button, which allows you to adjust some of the adjustments on the 
mixer itself. Now, this is a five and a half inch touch screen that you can see here. And uh, it's basically you just tap it and it will allow you to set up the Rodecaster Pro as you need it. So I'm trying to get you a bit better light there on those. So it says faders, output, smart pads, which is this part of the mixer, your display. You can set up different shows. So if you're looking to have your own show with music and things like that, you can save to this particular mixer the settings that you'd want for a particular show. So if you're doing any number of sort of shows, then this is a really ideal mixer for this. And again, makes it a lot different to many of the other mixers on the market. Then you have your system button. And I'm not going to click on these per se. This is set up, but the system one would be where you can actually update the software for the mixer. You can also see at the top here, it shows, oh, it shows the, uh, it's very sensitive touchscreen, which is great, but um, sometimes not when you're demonstrating. So you've got this nice, uh, like Wi-Fi connection showing that I'm connected to Wi-Fi as well through this mixer. So if you use the Ethernet connection and or the Wi-Fi, it will update, offer you updates for the mixer itself. So looking at the display again, you can see that all these components here, you can access by clicking on the screen and you can also access them from using these channel buttons as well. So if I click on a channel button, it's going to show me the different settings that correspond. So you can see there's your Bluetooth. This is the main mixer coming in from the smart pads here. So all the voice effects. So earlier I was using the voice changer and uh, this is where you can use like voice disguise and things like that. So it's really, it looks complicated, but it is relatively simple to use. So if you do have any questions and you're joining me here, make sure you definitely uh, ask any, because I see that we've got one viewer here. So you're obviously keen to see what this does. Now, obviously the faders are the microphone volume. So if I slowly lift, lift that, you'll slowly hear me coming up. Now, this does have its own preamps, what they call revolution pre preamps. And what that is, is that's going to give the boost to the microphone signal. So some people often ask, do I need what's referred to as a cloud lifter for this particular mixer? While it's not needed because it comes with its own preamps, it you can also use it. And I've seen videos up on the internet, on YouTube, that actually show you the difference between the two. And what that will do is it'll give your audio that extra boost for that sort of radio, deep radio sound. And if uh, you're someone who's sort of looking to get that sort of feel and the look of a radio announcer, you know, that deep, you know, midnight radio voice that so many people seem to love, then uh, this mix is going to help you do that. And a cloud lifter on the end of it's not going to hurt neither. So just, it, it, it's a common question a lot of people ask is, will the cloud lifter, you know, help this product? Is it needed? Probably not needed, but it doesn't hurt neither. If you've got one, you can always check and see what your preference is to increase you know, improve the sound and audio quality. And anyone who's a bit of an audiophile uh, as far as recording goes, they're going to play with this. Um, I'm a set and forget type guy, so I don't like to touch the settings too much because once I found a setting I like, I tend to just leave it. So uh, now, touchscreen, five and a half inch. It is angled, so it has this bevel to it. So you can see it here, it's raised. And that's really good because on the other Rodecaster, the original version, which is still available here on Amazon, don't have it in the carousel, but it had a flat screen. So the viewing angle wasn't quite as good. So what Rode had done is they realized that, you know, some simple modification, and I'm always talking here on Amazon about how, you know, companies should be improving their own products instead of necessarily bringing out another product. So these have is definitely an improvement as is the touch screen the sensitivity of it so i, I like that they beveled the screen and they've also uh, added a feature to the bottom of the uh, mixer which i won't turn up and down for the risk of disconnecting everything but the other mixer didn't have a mount you can actually mount this to a stand as well so if you're a musician say then this mixer provides the opportunity for you to connect this to a stand and mount it so it could be next to you say on stage if you wanted to use sound pads and things of that nature so 
the six faders are physical. They refer to them as physical. Below the faders, you have your ability to listen without broadcasting. That's what the little button is here on the green. This is the mute button. So if I was talking or am talking and I hit this button, you're going to hear disappear. So that's the idea of the mute button. And uh, yeah, if you tap that, it will mute the channel that it's associated with. Now, the record button is also a pause button. If I hit record, it will record straight to the SD card or wherever I've set it to record to. If I tap it again, it goes orange and it's actually in a pause mode. For me to stop recording, I just hold the button and it will go back to green. So the previous version of the Roadcaster had a start and stop. So that's an added feature. So they've actually added the ability to pause. So if you're doing like a pre-recording or batch recording and you have to stop, go do something, come back, um, it will continue recording in the file. That's the advantage. When you stop a recording, you're going to have the recording create its own file. So if you're in the middle of recording or say you're doing audio books and a rating or something of that nature, this could really help you get a, you know, a good session in without having to create a whole heap of files. Now, while I talk about the files for this, one of the other common questions around the Rodecaster Pro 2 is, does it record multi-track? So can you have each channel recorded on its own uh, file, to its own file? Short answer, that is yes. And you can also do that through digital audio workstation software as well through the USB-Cs that I showed you at the start of the live stream. So it's really packed with a whole lot of features. And what they've done that's different and where they've approached this is the original gangster of the Rodecaster Pro uh, audio mixer. It was considered as a podcast unit, so purely for podcasts. And what they've done with the Rodecaster Pro 2 is they've made it a mixer for everyone. So if you're a live streamer, as I said in that little song I sang at the start of the live stream, if you're a live streamer or a YouTuber or a podcaster, uh, then this is the mixer for you. It, it's also for musicians, which it, the last one really wasn't suited for music. So it makes it a game changer to be able to have one unit that fits all. The other thing that is really noticeable about the Rodecaster Pro 2 is it's relatively lightweight for portability, which the other one was a lot heavier and a larger footprint. So not only have they considered, you know, that this may be set up permanently on a desk, they've also considered that it may also be used by musicians and be portable. So I'll go back to the mixer, the audio from the mixer, and we'll have a little bit more of an explore of some of these buttons. You probably had, it, you may have had echo there. So um, I apologize for that as I closed out the other audio and brought this one in. So you may have got two audio streams. But this mixer, looking at the, the different features, you can see you can have playback and recordings here. You can see there's the name of, helps if I show you this mixer. So I'll go back so you can see what I did. So I clicked on the first channel. Um, so this is the, show people with a passion is saved here so all the settings for people with a passion show would be in here and you can see the recordings for that podcast that have been done they're sitting there ready to be then transferred and you can see you can import audio and you can also export audio as well or you can create a new show so like i said if you are someone who has multiple shows then that's a feature that you can use now you've also got uh, different sort of microphone uh, and items that you can add to this particular mixer. So I'll just scroll them across so you can see. Hopefully the there is a bit of light on this, so it might be hard to see. So you can have normal line in, which is your TRS type cables. Then you have, you know, set to an instrument. So the, uh, the there's a guitar here. The next one across is a dynamic microphone, and I'm actually on a dynamic microphone. So what you notice when you choose different items on here, you can add or change the processing. So you can choose to either process or keep the signal from the input 
raw or you can add some sound effects and processing so you can adjust the db level of a microphone here if you want to change that i'm on channel two here that's why it's green so there is no microphone plugged in here so any changes i apply will not work with a dynamic microphone uh, if you have one and it's not a road branded microphone this is where you would actually choose to choose a generic microphone then make the changes then you have your condenser mic as i clicked on that this light came on which is the phantom power so for a condenser microphone you would need phantom power then you will see that you've got different microphones here from the rode family of mics so they've literally matched the different types of the most common microphones to this mixer as well so if you have you know sure microphone and things like that they're not only looking at their own brand of microphone they're offering some of the other more popular items as well or brands if you see that you've got different microphones then you might have a microphone that you want to know you know how it goes with this you can pretty much plug in any type of microphone and you should be okay with it now uh, let's have a look at these processes. Uh, so you've got different things that you can adjust. So you've got your Aphex high signal pass filter and low, and you can adjust these with this encoder here. So if I was to say you want to change some a setting here, I can adjust it using this knob that you can see over here. So you can see, you know, the different types of filters. You can change ratios, release frequency. I don't want to get too complicated on that. That's now the DSR. So you have a noise gate as well. So actually, I'll explain a couple of these for those that are considering podcasting. Is your DSR is the sib sibilance that we have in certain words and letters, so that we may get what we call sibilance. Now it has a DSA, you can activate that. You can also activate the noise gate. So what the noise gate is, is where there's noise in the background. So if you're in an environment that's noisy and it has a certain decibel of level, then you have a threshold here that can be adjusted and that threshold will lift or lower the noise gate. And what that basically means is going to prevent the microphone picking up certain level of audio from the uh, from the microphone so that makes it you know again a good device just to have if you're in a noisy environment that having a noise gate on your mixer is going to save a lot of time and energy and effort in post-production when you're editing the audio or sending it off to an editor for that matter so something there that uh you may not have in an existing mixer that you have that you might like to add as a feature by buying the Rodecoaster Pro 2. All right, so we understand there's a mixer. There's also the virtual faders as well. So you can see here the USB came up when I tapped on that. So you can adjust these. So this is like the computer input. So right now I am going through a computer to live uh, stream to the Amazon Live platform so this is connected to a computer so these settings would be relevant to the particular USB-C I showed earlier as to you know what signals and what processing gets added to that particular channel so that's why we refer to six physical faders and then you have your three virtual faders so that's it, it's a little bit different to most other mixers in that they all have just the physical channels and therefore this has some added channels based around the USB-C. Which brings me to this last section here. Actually, this is Bluetooth. I won't go so much into the Bluetooth, uh, except to say that you know you can change the punch, the sparkle, the depth by adding processing to that. Uh, it does not have the degree of quality, say, as the uh, SC21 cable that I'll show in a second uh, to connect to, say, a phone and or other device like an iPad or something like that. While most people are happy that there is a Bluetooth function for this particular mixer, the most, if you're looking to play audio and that, most people say that they're not overly happy with the quality that comes from or the control that they have over the Bluetooth. Now, this last channel here helps control the shuffle pads or control pads. So here you can see some buttons down the bottom that allow me to shuffle through a number of sound banks i can load any number of sound effects and sounds 
to these sound banks. And on the side here on the screen, as I cycle through those, you'll see that they change. Now, each one of those is something that I've loaded into a different sound bank. So you can have music beds, you can have sound effects, you can store shows in this so if you wanted to live stream an audio show to somewhere you can do that I actually have that feature here i have some shows on here uh, you also have the voice changes so i started out the audio uh, with a song and i added a voice changer so you can see that i can just change my voice <laughs> megaphone and then you also have the so you can see there's a number of sound effects there as well that can be added that are built into this particular mixer you can also change those and add your own effects have a play with that if that's something you choose to do as a content creator had a little bit of fun with that uh, on what I shared earlier. I actually recorded a song for this and then posted it here on Amazon and on social media and had someone actually ask for the words of it. I found that really intriguing. So I'm just going through here to see what else I've got. So uh, you can see there's different sound effects that I've loaded. So if you're a gamer and you want to add sound effects to your lives, then this mixer could be a lot of fun as well and uh, something that you can add to. And I said I did have a shows on here, so I've preloaded uh, shows. It starts with an ad, but I, I'll, I'll start and stop just so you can understand the quality. Use VHS tapes. Actually, we'll get this as one. As I help you navigate the journey of creating your very own podcast. Very, very Visit modernmediaschool.com to give voice to your brand with a digital content strategy that works for you 24-7. But here's the kicker, right? The kicker is there's no strings attached. So you're creating something where you don't have an expectation around something in return. So reciprocity is less important than anything else. So you can see there, I've loaded and preloaded audio, which is good if you want to run a live show into somewhere, then you can load your shows up on this mixer and just live stream them in audio, say on social audio platforms, which is actually what that is for. So they're broadcast into uh, social platforms. You can also have uh, backing music. So this one is a backing track that I often use if I'm talking. <laughs> so, so what I do is I drop the music behind me and I just talk and chat. And if I'm in a social audio room and I want some music in the background, then this is the royalty-free audio that I would use uh, as a backing sound to put some ambience into a room. So you can see there's a whole heap of things. The other thing that these pads are as well is their smart pads, or they're called smart pads, because they can also trigger events. So if you want to trigger an action uh, through the software that you can download from Rode for the mixer, then you can set those actions up and use them as triggers for the different events. So uh, very thorough it's it's only a walkthrough it's only a bit of an explore of the roadcaster pro 2 so if you are considering getting one and you know you're watching here and you do have any questions feel free to just pop them in the uh, chat below and even just say hello just so i know you are watching just say hello tell me where you are in the world uh, i'm located in australia if you haven't noticed the accent i'm going to just move on to the next item in a moment. So I'm going to close down the uh, Rodecaster Pro 2 audio and just go back to my standard audio, which will give you, again, the chance to hear the difference. That's pretty much a rundown of the basics of the Rodecaster Pro 2. And you can obviously find heaps of information on the Road products and Rodecaster Pro. Uh, also, the pod mic that I you know, talked about earlier. And by having the right equipment, Things like, you know, the Rodecaster Pro 2 allows you to save some time post-production because a lot of this with the filtering and the same as the filtering on the microphone allows you to get rid of some of the problems you would experience when you come to edit audio. I made the mistake of not having uh, this cable for the Rodecaster 
Pro, I wanted to, as I showed, stream some audio into some social audio apps. And I have a iPad that I wanted to do that through or into the app. And what I didn't realize is you need a special cable from Rode to do that. So if it's something you're looking to buy the uh, mixer, you know, if you're looking to get it today, then make sure you get this particular cable. This is the SC19, but if you try and use a generic USB-C to lightning connection with the Rode mixer, you're not going to have any success. So just something to be aware of is you do need the SC19 cable if you're looking to connect it to an iPad or an iPhone or a device like that. One of the things that is different with the Rodecaster Pro 2 to the original Rodecaster is that it doesn't have the TRRS connection that the original had. And there's a number of creators that were very annoyed by that uh, because it certainly is useful. And I have the original and it's a feature that I constantly use. And uh, I have the other cable now, so it's not a problem with the Rodecaster Pro 2, but it's a feature that they removed, which I wish they had left in. Now, a little bit of bias here, I am Australian. As I said, I'm located here in Australia and Rode is a Australian made product. So for those that don't know, the company is located south of me uh, here in Australia and it's one of the products that I'm you know, happy to be able to uh, use and also share with you here on the Amazon platform. <laughs> The Roadcaster Pro 2. If you're a creator, or a live streamer, or a YouTube dreamer, or podcaster, then this is the mixer for you. It's the Rode Roadcaster Pro 2. An amazing piece of equipment that you'll never know existed until now. So here's what you gotta do, is get yourself a Rodecaster Pro 2.